All right. So this last part is something I want to start with saying with this. Families have not been able to, no matter what, keep up with the cost of attendance at colleges and universities across the country. Even if you think about when you were first born, 15, 16, 17, 18 years ago, right? I want to make sure I keep in, I know there's some people who skip grades, so maybe there's a 15-year-old watching this. No one anticipated colleges costing the amount that it did. And even if they had the ability to save, it still might not be enough. I am not a parent. However, I've been an educator for more than a decade. And so I care for my students in the same way, not exactly the same, maybe different, but in a very similar way as families care for their children. And if it breaks my heart, to see a student not be able to go to a place that they worked really hard to get into because of money. Imagine how difficult it is for the family to have to look their child in the eye and say, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I remember when I was in college and I wanted to study abroad and I wanted to take it during the summer, which means there's not a lot of financial aid in the summer outside of loans and I called my parents and I asked them for an amount of money. That for me, I didn't understand how much it was until I became an adult and realized it. And I remember just being devastated and almost angry that they couldn't just give me the money. Because for me, I just didn't know how much money that actually was. And I remember after my mom just started to text me, oh, you know, I think this person can give this and this and this. And even though she couldn't do it and she was torn, she was still trying. Let me tell you something. The amount that I asked for is a fraction, like one thirty second of a fraction of what it cost for colleges now. And if it had cost what it costs now, I don't think it would be able to be done. Even me with two degrees, and a really great job. If I had a kid, I still wouldn't be able to pay 100% out of pocket, no matter how much education I got, no matter how much I decided to work really hard in companies and, and, and do really well with money. It is almost impossible. And so when you think about having this conversation that you see on your screen now with your family, I want you to make sure that it's met with compassion, understanding, and without entitlement. And I want you to release any expectation that you think your family owes you in this particular time and understand that it is actually going to be very difficult for them to say no more than you think. And so these are questions that I want you to ask your family. The first one, what can you contribute to my college funds, if any? For some of you, your family's going to say, oh, we have it. It's all good. Apply where you would like to apply. For others, they might say, oh, we can get you there and back. We'll cover, you know, a flight or, uh, you know, some books. And some of them might say, hey, we have $10,000 saved up. Whatever they say, you want to respond with gratitude. Because for them, that's probably the best they could do. Number two, you want to ask your family, especially if you need financial aid, if they filled out their taxes in the last two years. They're going to need that. It's important to ask that early because you want to fill out your financial aid forms between October and December. So if they need to do it, you want to make sure that they do it. You also can help them find a place if they can't afford an accountant to do it. Find a place like H&R Block to see if anyone does anything pro bono or for free for individuals to help students get their financial aid forms filled out. Those companies know you need your taxes. The next one, would you be willing to co-sign a loan for me if I needed it? Again, whatever their answer is, is just information. You're just going to accept it because that's just what it is. And you take that information and you make your list based off of your personal situation, right? At the end of the day, I know that when I have a child, if my child asks me for the amount that I asked my parents, I would be able to do it. That particular amount, right? (laughs) Um, and you know what, when their child, my particular kid's child 
ask them for money, I hope that they can do double that, right? Because we're building legacy here and legacy is not built overnight. So the families who can actually do it, it doesn't necessarily mean that their parents could do it. Maybe they made sacrifices to allow them to do it, right? And so that is the goal. The goal is to not necessarily be upset, but to use it as motivation. So that way your children and your children's children can have what it is and beyond what you're asking for today. And you're deciding to go this path so that way it can happen. And then, of course, are you able to take out a Parent PLUS loan if I needed it? And then are there any programs at your job or in the community that you know about that I might qualify for to help pay for college? Now, after these conversations, it might be met with relief or anger or shame or guilt or lots of other things. I want you to like accept those emotions. They're not going to go away. But I also want you to know that there is thousands of options for you in the form of scholarships, as well as in the form of schools that can fit your financial costs and what you can do. And that's all we're trying to do here. We're trying to make a solid list that includes academic fit, social fit, and financial fit. All right. So I'll see you at the action steps.